When a young man is forced to marry his ideal partner, a young woman he has never met, he must decide whether to obey the rules or follow his heart. Even if you are not happy, now we will see. Our story begins on the outskirts of a chapel where a famous idol is marrying her fiancé, who happens to be an ordinary person. In this world, not very different from ours, there is something called the Yukari Law, which aims to balance the country's birth rates. When young people turn 16, the government assigns them a partner to marry, regardless of their social status or personality. The law is obeyed, and once assigned a partner, young individuals are forbidden from falling in love with anyone other than their designated partner. These couples, known as Yukari marriages, have successfully balanced the birth rate and even children born from these unions have proven to be more intelligent and healthier than previous generations. However, this story is not about one of these marriages but about a young man who dared to question the system. On an ordinary day, our protagonist, Yukari Najima, attends classes where he spends the entire day observing his classmate Misaki Takasaki from a distance. His routine is disrupted when one of his classmates declares that he is going to refuse to obey the government's orders and will decide whom to marry on his own. He recently received his notification, and the next day, he will meet his future wife and her family. The young man is furious, but Najima and his friends tell him that what he really wants is to enjoy youth and singleness. However, he has no choice but to obey. The classmate refuses and promises, along with his friends, that he will marry whoever he wants and not who they tell him to. Everyone agrees, even Misaki, much to our hero's surprise. Later, at home, the protagonist remembers how he met Misaki in fifth grade and fell madly in love with her after she thanked him when he shared his eraser with her. However, after that, he never dared to speak to her. During dinner, Najima's family celebrates that the young man will soon turn 16 and receive his marriage notification, which makes them very happy. However, he only wishes to continue being in love with Misaki, even if it's from a distance. That night, our hero realizes that Misaki, who has already turned 16, could receive her notification at any moment. Determined not to let time slip away, he decides to confess his love to her before it's too late for both of them. The next day, the protagonist decides to confess to his classmate, something that seems to be common for her, as two or three times a month a classmate confesses to her. The young man tells her that he knows her, but she doesn't seem to remember him, and he realizes that what was the most important day of his life for him is just an ordinary day for her. Nevertheless, he gathers the courage to tell her that after classes, he would like to meet her at the park outside the school and then rushes off. That evening, our enthusiastic hero arrives at the park and waits for his beloved. Five hours later, he starts to understand the hint and heads home. Just as he's about to leave, Misaki arrives, letting us know that this girl is going to be complicated, and the two have a conversation. She tells him that she does remember meeting him and has been keeping an eye on Najima's activities, as she also seems to be attracted to him. The young man starts to talk, gathers courage, and finally declares his love to the young lady. Misaki bursts into tears, and he apologizes, wanting to change the subject. However, she surprises him by showing him half of the eraser he gave her in fifth grade. She confesses her love, and the two share a kiss, but as the clock strikes midnight, a notification arrives on our hero's phone. Upon seeing it, he realizes that his designated wife might be Misaki, but the message disappears. At the same time, two government employees appear and give him his written notification, revealing the name of his future wife, Rurina Sanana. And no, I don't know if the employees magically appeared or were hiding in the dark, watching two underage individuals making out, waiting for 12 o'clock. But the less we think about it, I think the better. Misaki is happy for Najima, telling him that he will always cherish the half hour they were together and runs off. However, he decides that the notice doesn't erase how he feels and goes after her, promising her that he will find a way to fix things. Elsewhere, a young pink-haired girl receives a notification, informing her of her future husband's name, Yukari Najima. The next day, Najima and his family head to a luxurious venue where the parents and the engaged couples gather to get to know each other. 
While everyone appears to be very happy, he doesn't seem excited at all. Najima remembers how the previous night, his parents organized a meeting with his future wife and her parents. This is a common occurrence since the young individuals are still underage. However, he doesn't want anything to do with it, especially without consulting Masaki first, with whom he hasn't spoken since. In this way, the young man goes to school, but his classmates tell him that he must go see his fiancée. When he reminds them of their promise not to marry anyone they don't want to, his classmates get scared, making it clear that the entire promise was just empty talk. The teachers lock Najima up until he changes his mind, and Misaki herself tells him that she feels nothing for him and that he should go see the young lady he is supposed to marry. Thus, with a broken heart, Najima and his family meet the family of his future wife. Najima meets Rorina and can't help but notice how beautiful she is. However, during the meeting, the parents are the ones talking in front of the two young people who have just met, and they are too shy to speak to each other. Rorina starts to talk, but upon realizing that Najima shows no interest whatsoever, she gets angry, calling him rude, and storms out of the room. Mortified, the parents apologize to each other, and Najima's parents insist that he go after Rorina and apologize. Reluctantly, our hero agrees and looks for the young lady, finding her crying in a room filled with mattresses. The girl tells our protagonist that she is very nervous because suddenly she finds herself obligated to become a wife when she is still very young. He agrees with her and explains his situation with Misaki. Although he realizes that talking about the girl he is in love with to his future wife is not ideal, this catches the attention of the pink-haired girl. Rurina is fascinated by this love story and offers to help our hero discover what Misaki feels for him, all the while learning a bit about love herself. Najima likes the idea, and he starts to develop affection for Rurina. So, the two decide to pretend that everything is fine and will follow the rules while figuring out what they want to do. Later, at school, Najima's classmates are amazed by Rorina's beauty. However, one of them, Yusuke Nisaka, mysteriously asks Misaki if she wants to see a photo of Rorina, but she ignores him. Later, our protagonist visits his future wife at her school, where he discovers that despite her beauty and intelligence, Rorina has no friends because she is very competitive, which makes her unpopular. After school, our heroes run into Misaki passing on the street across, and Najima tells Rorina that she is the girl he likes. So, Rorina approaches her. While Najima hides, Rorina introduces herself to Misaki as Najima's future wife, and the two of them go to a cafe to have something to drink. There, Rorina asks Misaki what she sees in our hero, and Misaki honestly responds, making the pink-haired girl realize how much she loves Najima. The two continue talking and exchange phone numbers, which makes Rorina very happy as she has found her first friend. Rorina's brain goes into panic mode because she doesn't know how to behave with a friend and even believes she might be in love with Misaki. However, when Najima asks her if she wants to kiss Misaki and the pink-haired girl says no, he tells her that it's just friendship she feels. Rorina then asks our protagonist if he has kissed Misaki, and he responds affirmatively but mentions it was before receiving the notification. So, she advises him to kiss her again. The next day, Misaki and Najima talk at school, and he tells her that Rorina, his future wife, has suggested that he should kiss Misaki every day. This surprises his classmate. Later, Najima and his friend Yusuke have a conversation. Yusuke, suspecting that there's something between Najima and Misaki, asks how things are going. Our hero responds that things are fine, mentioning that Riri, as he calls her, has asked him to visit on Sunday, but she also suggested he should kiss Misaki. The young man tells his friend that he's not sure if he can do that, but Yusuke responds that it wouldn't be the first time he acts courageously. He reminds Najima of the first time they met when Najima saved him from a bully who wanted to beat him up. The week goes by, and Najima realizes that, despite all the recent events, Misaki has never been a part of his life. So, they don't hang out at school as friends would to avoid raising suspicions. Sunday arrives, and our hero goes to visit his fiancée at her house. 
After she scolds him for being late, she invites him into her room, where he discovers that Misaki was already there. Misaki is surprised because she received the invitation from Riri, but she didn't know he would be there. The situation becomes a bit awkward at first, but eventually, they both agree to accompany Riri. The gathering is uncomfortable for Najima, who can't do much more than sit in a corner. It gets even worse when Riri suggests that the two friends should kiss. Both Najima and Misaki refuse, especially Misaki. However, Riri eventually convinces them, and she is the one who has to persuade Najima to kiss her. They kiss in front of an enthusiastic Riri, who watches them as if it were a soap opera. However, Riri's excitement turns into confusion, something that Misaki notices. Before leaving, Misaki tells her that she is willing to give up Najima, considering that it's Riri and he who are going to get married. Yet, the pink-haired girl insists that she wants them to kiss every day, although it's evident that she is confused. Later, Riri accompanies Najima, and they run into Yusuker. However, a comment from him makes Riri immediately dislike him. The next day, after gym class, Najima and Yusuker talk. Since Yusuker is still under 16 and hasn't received his notification, he has decided to make the most of his single life, becoming a successful ladies' man. Najima is not bothered by this, but when Yusuker and Misaki exchange glances, our hero can't help but feel uncomfortable. Najima wonders if something is going on between them. After all, they are the most attractive ones in the school, both single. He hasn't revealed his forbidden relationship with Misaki to his friend, so he can't say anything, even though he doesn't like the situation. Najima meets Misaki and tells her that Rorina told him to kiss her every day, but they both know it's not right, however, neither of them can handle their temper and the two kiss, first a little shyly, but this quickly escalates into a passionate kiss, which is accidentally witnessed by Yusuke without their knowledge. In class, Najima tells his friend that he wants to ask him a question, but Yusuke tells him he has something to do, so the two agree to meet up earlier. Walking through the halls, Yusuke and Misaki again exchange glances, which causes our heroine's classmates to get excited. Yusuke enters the classroom and is surprised to see his friend asleep. Taking advantage of the situation, he gives Najima a kiss on the mouth without him knowing. Yusuke wakes up Najima, who, unaware of what happened, asks if he likes any girl at school. Yusuke replies that he doesn't, and the friends head home separately. It's been almost a month since the engagement between Najima and Riri, and the parents of the young man have invited our pink-haired heroine to dinner while they await the visit of government representatives who are coming to interview the young couple to address their concerns, and mainly to conduct a check-in. During dinner, Najima's parents ask the couple if they have kissed, to which they feel embarrassed to respond. However, the parents tell them that if they are going to get married, there's nothing wrong with it. Later, in Najima's room, after cleaning up the mess, Riri asks our protagonist if he has kissed Misaki. He answers affirmatively, and after contemplating it for a while, she realizes that she is not jealous and doesn't feel bad about it. She is happy for him, although it's noticeable that she is not entirely comfortable with the situation, especially when she realizes that Misaki enjoys kissing her future husband. The two start to have a serious conversation, but they are interrupted by government representatives who explain that they are a highly compatible couple as they are products of what is known as the Red Thread of Science. It involves a series of tests that all citizens undergo from birth, resulting in perfect unions. However, in these tests, physical appearance is not taken into account as it has been proven that relationships based on looks rarely work. Nevertheless, they were lucky. The government agents also encourage the young couple to kiss, and who knows, maybe more, as not only is it allowed, but it's customary for designated couples to have relationships before marriage. However, our heroes are not keen on discussing the topic. Seeing that everything is in order, the agents bid farewell, but not without asking if they know where Misaki's house is. Najima and Riri inquire if it's because Misaki has received her notification, but they respond that they cannot disclose that information, leading Najima petrified. Before heading home, 
Riri is invited by Najima's parents on a family trip, and she tells them that she will confirm soon. Meanwhile, she returns home, and Najima is left alone with his thoughts and his broken heart. The next day at school, Najima doesn't know how to talk to Misaki without raising suspicions, so he spends the whole day waiting for the right moment. This increasingly worries him, especially when he sees her talking with Yusuke. At the end of the day, the two are assigned a school task, finally giving them a moment alone. When Najima asks if she received her notification, she responds that she hasn't received anything, instead, government agents visited her family for another reason. She doesn't provide details about the visit and kisses our hero again before going to the park to talk with Riri. Later, Riri calls Najima and asks about Misaki, but he tells her that it was nothing. The girl tells her fiancé that she has decided to go on the family trip but has also invited Misaki to join them. Anticipating potential issues, Najima reluctantly invites the less cooperative Yusuke, and the four friends prepare for what promises to be an interesting journey. On the day of the trip, plans have changed. Instead of having one guest for Najima's family trip, two more have been added, and everyone can't fit in the car. Therefore, Najima's parents and sister will go by car, while Najima and his friends will take the train. At the station, our heroes gather. Misaki and Yusuke exchange their now classic glances, while Riri recognizes her fiancé's friend as the person who disrespected her. On the train, Najima continues to observe his friends, and he has no doubt that Yusuke likes Misaki. Upon arriving at the campsite, the men are in charge of the kitchen. Despite Najima's expectations, Yusuke turns out to have no talent in the kitchen at all. Najima ends up preparing dinner, though everyone believes it was Yusuke. Najima goes to fetch his friends for lunch but is surprised to find both of them playing in the river in their swimsuits, which embarrasses him a bit. The girls notice him but don't make an issue out of it. He tells them it's time to go, but Riri injures her ankle. As a result, Najima is forced to carry her in his arms back to the campsite. Along the way, he can't help but notice his future wife's body, adding another layer of discomfort to the journey. Meanwhile, Yusuke talks with Misaki, who observes the situation and asks him if he enjoys watching this. She replies that the reason for making the trip is her affection for Riri. Najima sees them chatting from a distance and can't help but feel uneasy as well. At the campsite, Riri's father, a veterinarian, examines her ankle and determines that it's nothing more than a sprain. In the evening, Najima and Yusuke talk, and Najima asks his friend if there's something he wants to share, some kind of secret. Yusuke panics, thinking Najima is referring to the stolen kiss, but just as he's about to confess, they are interrupted by Riri, who has a nighttime activity planned for the group. She decides to organize a courage test in the forest, where they split into pairs to see which couple is braver. Although she and Yusuke don't get along, Riri chooses to go with him, allowing Najima and Misaki to take a solitary walk. During the walk, Yusuke and Riri begin to patch things up and have a more in-depth conversation. Yusuke asks Riri if she supports the romance between Najima and Misaki, and she answers affirmatively, finding it very romantic. Instead of congratulating her, Yusuke asks if she understands the consequences of her actions. Meanwhile, Najima and Misaki walk together, and she asks him if he would have carried her if she had hurt her ankle, to which he responds affirmatively. They continue walking hand in hand. Misaki accidentally falls into a well while following a firefly, and Najima takes her hand, causing both of them to fall. Back with Yusuke, he scolds Riri for her innocence, as she doesn't understand that regardless of how the relationship turns out, she will have to marry Najima. She would become the third will next to two lovers, and in the event that Najima decides to defy the government order out of love and give up the marriage, her life would be ruined due to the implications of defying a government mandate, including being rejected by any school in the future. Riri begins to consider these consequences but is distracted by the light of fireflies. The duo then discovers Misaki and Najima in a compromising situation and helps them out of the well. Later on, the group encounters a swarm of fireflies and can't help but feel amazed, as well as blessed to be among friends. 
they all join hands. Upon returning home, the young people head to their respective houses. Yusuke apologizes to Najima for what he did but doesn't reveal the specifics. Najima deduces that his friend is interested in Misaki. Najima makes plans with Riri, which, for the first time, don't include Misaki, and everything seems to be returning to normal. However, a strange letter arrives at our hero's house, promising that everything is about to change. Najima and Riri are sitting on the bed, and Najima tries to kiss Riri. She initially refuses, but he succeeds and passionately embraces her. Suddenly, Riri wakes up, it was all a dream, but she is shaken by its realism, especially considering she hasn't had her first kiss yet. The next day, Riri researches everything she can about kisses in the library. Arisa Mamansika, one of her classmates, interrupts her. Riri doesn't understand why Arisa is so interested in her, but Arisa expresses a desire to be friends. Later, Arisa explains that she is the younger sister of the doctor who has taken care of Riri for years. After hearing stories about Riri and discovering they attend the same school, Arisa wants to be friends with her. Riri, not having much experience with friendships, asks Arisa what friends do. At Najima's school, he talks with his classmate Takeda and notices that Misaki is avoiding him for some reason. The physical education teacher sees the two students and tells them they shouldn't attend classes today as they have a special class at the ministry. At the exit, they meet Yusuker and explain that they're going to a special class, unaware that Yusuker knows the content of the class but doesn't tell them, continuing on his way. At the ministry's offices, Nijima encounters Igarashi, a girl he remembers from the same school. He wonders if she will also attend the conference. Inside the ministry auditorium, many couples are present, including Takeda and his future wife. Najima finds the situation surreal but is happy to see that they seem happy. Riri appears, and Najima is amazed by her beauty, she has changed her hairstyle, and others in the room notice that they also make a lovely couple. Inside the auditorium, our heroes discover that the class is actually an informative session aiming to educate young people on having safe and legal relationships. Everyone is surprised by the educational video, especially Riri, who hasn't even had her first kiss. Najima doesn't know how to calm her down. A government employee tells Najima to pay attention because they will be watching him closely, but then says he's just joking. However, this is enough to trigger alarms in Najima's mind, wondering if they suspect his love triangle. The situation gets weirder when the attending couples are taken to separate rooms for the second part of the class. Our heroes realize they are expected to have intimate relations, and Najima recalls the government employee's words, wondering if they are really being spied on. Not knowing what to do, Najima lunges at his future wife, and they both fall onto the bed. Fearful of being discovered, Najima kisses Riri, who initially resists but eventually allows him to kiss her, although it's clear she's not enjoying the situation. Najima realizes this and backs away. Riri asks why he forced the kiss, and he explains they are being watched. She questions where he heard that because if people found out the government was watching them have relations, trust would be lost. She suggests that whoever told him must have seen the gullibility in his face. Najima apologizes, and she, still confused, asks for some time apart. That night, everyone must return home. An angered Najima walks through the building's halls and encounters the government employee. Najima asks why he said those things, and the employee questions what Najima would have done if another girl had been in bed with him. Najima thinks about Misaki, and the employee, before leaving, tells him to think carefully about what he wants for his future. The next day, Najima arrives at school and discovers his classmates rehearsing the school play, which this time is a reverse role version of Romeo and Juliet, with Yusuke playing Juliet and Misaki playing Romeo. Najima finds this curious and wants to share it with Riri, but he remembers that things aren't quite right with his future wife. While preparing the set, a pendant that Riri gave Najima falls to the floor, almost crushed by a hammer. He protects the gift with his hand, injuring himself in the process. Later, Misaki hears the news and rushes to the infirmary, where she meets Najima. 
She asks if he's okay, and he expresses relief at talking to her after a long time. Najima suggests he might deserve what happened. He acknowledges that their distance after the trip was expected, with exams starting and having different friend groups, plus her being more popular. Misaki interrupts him, explaining that she imposed a restriction on herself not to talk to him because she realized she had no right to come between him and Riri, whom she cares for deeply. She also fears that the more time they spend together, the more she'll fall in love with him, but she can never be his wife. Misaki asks Najima what bothers him, and he responds that he misjudged Riri due to his own innocence. Later, Misaki and Riri have lunch together, and without going into too much detail, Riri confirms that she will be away from Najima for a while, but she still misses him a lot. At school, Najima meets the government employee who had delivered documentation, and they have a conversation. The employee has noticed Najima's situation and tells him a story about a couple who received their notification and had to separate. Although they did, the boy always wonders what would have happened if he had listened to his heart instead of following the rules. Najima sends a handwritten letter to Riri, apologizing and inviting her to visit museums, but she doesn't respond. The next day, he receives a letter from Riri, expressing that while she is still confused, she hopes they can see each other again soon and wishes him the best at the art festival. Happy and energized, Najima goes to school to give his best. At school, Misaki practices her lines for the play and thinks about Riri. She realizes that the pink-haired girl has fallen in love with Najima but doesn't know it. Misaki decides not to tell Riri because she fears that if Riri finds out, everything will end for her. She chooses to be selfish and keep Najima for a little while longer. The school play is approaching, and everyone seems very excited, especially Najima, who has gained a boost of energy thanks to Riri's letter. Najima and Misaki talk, and he tells her that everything is going well with his future wife, at least, they have started talking again. Despite the positive vibes in the school, one of the students doesn't seem too enthusiastic about the play, and it's none other than Yusuker. His classmates, especially Najima, try to cheer him up, but Yusuker is not interested in acting, to the point that he suddenly stands up and leaves, resigning from the play. Najima follows him and insists he comes back, but Yusuker tells him he doesn't want to be the center of attention, so he has no intention of returning. As Najima continues to insist, it only makes Yusuker angrier, and he pushes him, surprising our hero. Yusuker tries to leave but is stopped by a mysterious man with the same haircut, revealing himself to be Yusuker's father. Najima, Yusuker, and his father go to eat something, and Yusuker calms down a bit. His father tells Najima that, since Yusuker has few friends, the least he should do is take care of the ones he has. Yusuker goes to the bathroom, and his father thanks Najima for being his son's friend. When Yusuker returns, Najima waits for him with a dessert to calm the spirits. Later, and more relaxed, the two friends talk, and Yusuker decides to return to the play. The next day, Najima writes a letter to Riri, hoping she can read it soon. At school, the main actors of the play, Yusuker and Misaki, take measurements for costume preparation, causing a stir among male and female students alike. September arrives, marking a new school year, and both Riri and Najima continue exchanging letters while Najima's class continues preparing for the school play. During a break, Misaki and Najima talk. He tells her he has invited Riri to the play, and Misaki mentions that the director is insisting a lot on the idea of Romeo and Juliet kissing at the end of the play. Najima asks what Yusuker thinks about that, and she questions if he has fallen in love with Riri. He tries to say that he's in love with her and doesn't know what he feels for Riri. After thinking about it, he asks Misaki what love is. Najima explains that he has been thinking about it lately, and she responds that love is the happiness one feels when they see that special person, someone who, no matter how things are going, always brings a smile to their face. Misaki explains that that person is him, the one who makes her happy and whom she wants to be with. However, that dream ended the day he received his notification, when reality told them they would never be together, and they don't have the future she dreamed of.
To make matters worse, his future wife is perfect, and it's only a matter of time before he realizes it and falls in love with Riri, forgetting about her. Najima interrupts her with a hug, and they stay close. It's there that she asks him, what is love? The school play is approaching, and our protagonists are getting ready for the big night. Najima, who is handing out flyers, can't help but notice how cute Misaki looks as Romeo, but he realizes that Misaki's friends seem familiar, as some of them went to high school with him, including the mysterious Igarashi, whom he has seen wandering around the government offices. Not wanting to deal with Misaki's friends, our hero runs away and encounters the government employee. The man, who knows that Najima doesn't love Riri, feels a bit guilty for his joke in the special class. He has made some inquiries to find out if it's true that the phone notification stated Misaki as his designated wife. The man explains that he checked the data, and Riri is indeed his wife, as it was written on the paper he received on the announcement day. However, for some reason, it's possible that the name of the girl in the text message was altered, but that would be the error, not the other way around. So, Riri is the chosen one. Speaking of Riri, the pink-haired girl, accompanied by her new friend, arrives at Najima's school as he sent her tickets for the show. But when they see each other, both feel uncomfortable, so they don't have time to talk, and she goes to the auditorium. Yusuke prepares for his role and thanks his friend for all the support he has given him. During the play, Najima can't help but feel moved and identified with a story about two lovers who can't be together due to societal pressures. He is impressed by the energy with which the actors deliver their lines. The play is a success, and Najima still needs to talk to Riri, so he goes in search of her. However, before meeting his future wife, our hero encounters the mysterious Igarashi, who asks him why he isn't with Misaki. He asks what she means, and the ash-haired girl tells him that Misaki is his true designated wife. Najima is surprised, but so is Riri, who was nearby and overheard the conversation. Riri asks Igarashi what she meant, but the mysterious girl walks away, saying that everyone has secrets, even Misaki, and that she is willing to do whatever it takes to protect them. While leaving, Igarashi crosses paths with the government agent, who recognizes her but is ignored by the young girl. Riri doesn't understand what's going on, and Najima explains that he received a text message pairing him with Misaki, but that message would disappear, and then he would receive his true notification. She asks which of the two notifications is valid, and Najima tells her that she is his true designated wife. Najima realizes that he hasn't apologized to Riri yet, but she, encouraged, tells him that it's not a problem. They decide to leave that for later since there's now a mystery to solve. The couple visits Misaki and Yusuke to congratulate them on their performances. At that moment, Yusuke's father appears and congratulates his son, inviting Najima and his friends to a family wedding. Later, Najima tries to contact Igarashi, but the girl rejects his friend request. However, she accepts Riri's request, and they plan a meeting for the next day. The next day, at Igarashi's school, our heroes meet the girl, who, according to Riri, has an important last name, but she doesn't know it. The ash-haired girl takes our heroes to a cat cafe, where she explains that she is responsible for pairing Najima and Misaki because she knew Misaki from high school. While she initially came to hate our heroine, Igarashi soon got to know Misaki better and grew fond of her. They talked a lot and became great friends, and the topic of conversation was often Najima. Over the years, Igarashi saw how Masaki's love for our hero not only didn't diminish but grew stronger. So, she decided to do something for her friend. The girl is the granddaughter of the creator of the matchmaking system and is also a genius, so she had no trouble pairing our heroes online, but she couldn't prevent the paper notification. The government agent appears and reprimands Igarashi for her actions, telling her that it's not her right to pair people, but he lets her go. The government agent tells the young people that Igarashi is untouchable, so she comes and goes from the offices as she pleases, and despite what she did, she won't be punished. He assures them that their pairing is the correct one. Our heroes leave, and Riri asks Najima if he plans to choose Misaki, but he takes her hand and tells her that he likes her sincerity. 
Days later, our friends attend Yusuker's brother's wedding. Everyone seems very excited, except for Yusuker, who, as always, sees the negative side of everything. In the reception hall, the girls are approached by the chapel coordinator, who offers them a modeling job, showcasing wedding dresses. The girls accept, and they are informed that they will be contacted soon, while our heroes continue with their affairs. At the wedding, Riri, Najima, and the others witness the ceremony conducted by a government agent, the one in charge of the couple in question. They watch a video with all the details of the young couple before they met. Riri and Najima wonder if their wedding will be similar, and Najima thinks that if that happens, his past with Misaki will be erased. Riri and Misaki talk, and both realize the positive change in Riri's personality thanks to her new friends. Later, after the wedding, the girls gather to catch the bride's bouquet, but Misaki is not present. Najima goes to retrieve his forgotten phone from the table and finds Misaki crying. Unaware that Riri is watching them, Najima and Misaki share a kiss. Days later, Najima and Riri's families prepare a trip to Hot Springs, and although the relationship between the two young people is still a bit tense, they manage to enjoy the trip. At night, our heroes discover that their parents have booked a private room for them. Although both have bad memories of the last time they were alone in a room, they overcome their fears and have a good time. Before sleeping, Riri tells Najima that he should choose Misaki to be his future wife, surprising our protagonist. Riri explains that she has been researching, and there is a way to annul the engagement without tarnishing the reputation of either of them. They can claim that the couple does not get along, initiating a protocol where government representatives would interview them and even try to convince them to reconcile. However, if they manage to maintain the lie, they could be free of all obligations in six months. Misaki could do the same with her designated husband, and those who fail in their commitments legally are not marked, but they are not paired again, so the two could be together once and for all. Riri tells Najima that she only hopes that her next designated husband, as it can be requested to recalculate it if the wedding is cancelled, loves her as much as Najima loves Misaki. Najima agrees, although he jokes that it might be challenging to pretend that he doesn't like her. That night, they bid farewell with a kiss before starting their plan, but the kiss escalates, and things get a bit heated, leaving Najima's head, heart, and other organs filled with doubts. Back home, it's time for the wedding photo shoot of our heroines, but Najima, unsure of what he wants to do, decides not to attend. Yusuke visits him and asks why he doesn't want to go. Najima admits that while he has accepted to follow Riri's plan, deep down, he feels like he's lying to her because he feels more than just friendship for her. Yusuke convinces him to follow his heart, and Najima decides to go. At the parish, our heroines are having the worst modeling photo shoot in history as they are not putting any effort into it. Both are in love, and both want each other's happiness, willing to give up Najima for the other's sake. In the end, they confirm their friendship when Najima appears and sees them. Najima realizes that he is in love with both of them, connected by a red thread, and regardless of what destiny holds for them, he must be willing to fight for it. And thus, this curious series comes to an end. If you enjoyed it and want to recommend similar series, let me know in the comments. On my part, I bid farewell until next time. As always, you can subscribe to my channel and be part of this wonderful community. See you in the next one.